So you want to skate forward faster and have a better, more efficient stride. Well, I'm going to tell you three things to do and then also why you probably don't want to actually even learn this at the end. But first, I'm going to tell you how to do this. And I'm going to tell you how to do this in a really counterintuitive way, in a way that most coaches don't tell you. And when you have a secret that most coaches don't teach and then you do it and the best NHLers do it, well then you're actually gonna have an advantage because most players aren't doing it. You'll have an advantage over others. So here's the first counterintuitive thing and it's the arm swing. So most coaches teach a forward arm swing and that is fine because if you look with a runner, when a runner is running, they're upright with their body. So it looks like their arms are swinging forward. If we ask ourselves why a hockey player swings their arms side to side, what we see is as they bend over, the shoulders that were rotating forward now start to actually lead to a more sideways motion. And when we skate, we bend forward at the waist. Just look at McDavid, just look at McKinnon, they tend to be bent forward at the waist. So as that quote unquote forward arm swing that you see with runners starts to tilt forward, those arms start to move a bit more laterally and they come, as you come up, they start to move a bit more forward to back. So the first step is actually to go from skating forward with a forward arm swing, which is kind of unnatural, to a side to side arm swing. So instead of going from this to actually this. Now you don't actually have to believe me on this. All you have to do is just watch the fastest skaters and watch which direction their arms go. And then also explore the movement yourself to see what feels most natural. Does it feel most natural to have a forward and back arm swing or a side to side arm swing? So, okay, now why am I talking about arm swing? Is it just to upset everyone in the YouTube comments? No, I know it's gonna do that, but like, no, that's not why. Because key component of skating forward is the direction in which you stride. So look at this, I'm on the ice. If I try to push directly back, what ends up happening is I just slip, I don't go very fast. So what I need to do in order to get speed is I need to turn, dig my edge in, and then push. Now this assumes that as I continue pushing directly backwards, so if I keep pushing directly back like this, I can keep doing that at speed. I can't. Skating is like being in a sailboat where you actually want to have lateral force leading to your linear force. So what's going to happen is I'm not going to be pushing directly behind me all the way as I skate. That's hard to do. It's hard on my hips. And once you get beyond a certain speed, you can't, you can't do it. You can't sustain it. So what the top players do is after their first few strides where they're pushing directly back, they end up pushing more to the side. So they're pushing more to the side like this. And what happens is when you are doing this sideways stride, if you have your arm swing going forward as you're pushing out wide, it's totally unnatural and it's very weird. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna practice swinging the arms side to side and then actually driving out to the side. So I'll show you one more time, just striding out to the side. So those are the two things, the forward arm swing switching to side to side and then the lateral push that if you just make those really simple adjustments, it's gonna make your stride more mechanically efficient, easier and faster without extra effort. The other part of it is how do you make this stride game translatable? Well, when we're pushing and moving side to side, we end up staying in a very wide stance. And that wide stance allows us to access different movements. Now, what I said at the beginning was that you actually don't really wanna to spend too much time learning the forward stride because I've broken down film, and I know lots of other people have, where we watch an NHL game and we watch what percentage of the time do players actually skate forward? Like how, many, how much is the forward stride actually used? And it ranges between five to 10% of the time. So it's a huge problem when players and coaches spend 80, 90% of their time on the forward stride. 
when it's actually only five to 10% of the game. What we teach with downhill skating is the other 90, 95%. Hint, hint, that's what the downhill skating free training is for, which you can sign up for. If you wanna learn what those other 80, 90% of NHL movements are, that's what we've put together. So that's for another time, but we're still forward skating here, so let's keep on that. So just remember to keep that in mind when you're training. Not more than 10, 20% of your time, spend the 80% on the other mechanics that NHLers are using. So going back to it, why does this stride side to side with the arms and stride side to side with the legs make you more efficient in game? Well, it allows you to access new movements. Now, the other part of it that allows you to access new movements is no longer going from a push, so no longer pushing and turning a bit more into a rotation. Here's what I mean. Most power skating coaches, they teach that you go down here, low, and then you push. You drive off that back leg. Not a problem. However, it's not as efficient as it could be. What the top players do, like let's think of a McDavid or a McKinnon, is they actually rotate to stride. So each step is like a rotation, okay? So a way that you can learn this is by doing the 10 and two. So the 10 and two is this mechanic here. That's just going around in a circle like this. And we see Makar do this really well. Uh, we see lots of players do this really well today now. But using this in a linear way like this, 10 and two here, ends up teaching the mechanics that we want, which is a rotation of the body more so than a linear stride and push. So a way that you can actually develop a more efficient stride, and you, I don't wanna overcomplicate this in this video. If you wanna go deeper, you know what to do. There's the downhill skating course. Uh, but in this video, the main thing that you can do to start to feel more free and turn your stride from less of a push to more of a rotation is just practicing a 10 and two. So practice instead of striding with a push, practice a 10 and two as your first step. So actually doing a rotation on your first step. So it's just a 10 and two to rotate. Then you can string that into multiple strides. So I go 10 and two, 10 and two, 10 and two. And so I'm stringing together multiple rotation strides instead of a push stride. So you don't have to believe me on any of this, by the way. You can just test this out for yourself and notice if you can get the same amount of speed with less effort through a rotation or if a push is more efficient. Test it out yourself. So get into the comments, feel free to blow me up, but then also get on the ice and test it out yourself to see if it actually works. If it doesn't work and I'm wrong, come back, let us know. And uh, if I'm right, I'd also love to hear that too. So those are the three tips on how to skate forward faster. Like I said, that is only 10, maybe 5% of the game sometimes. If you wanna learn the other 80, 90, 95% of the mechanics that the NHLers are doing, that is covered in the downhill skating free training. And if you wanna unlock those mechanics, I'd love to see you there. Sign up on wherever the link is and will really transform your game when we get to those mechanics. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.